What's up, Vue devs? Welcome back to Learn Vue. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Vue suspense components, one of the better known changes in Vue 3. Suspense components allow our app to render some fallback content while waiting for an asynchronous component, letting us create a smooth user experience during load times. Thankfully, suspense components are extremely simple to understand and start using in our own apps. They don't even require any additional imports. By the end of this video, you should know what suspense components are, when to use them, and how to use them. But before we jump in, make sure to scroll down and hit that like button, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All right, let's go. So first, what even are suspense components? Suspense components are used to display fallback content when waiting for some sort of asynchronous component to resolve. And you may be wondering, when would we even want to use an async component? Honestly, the answer is more than you might think. Whenever we want our component to wait until it fetches data, which is usually in an asynchronous API call, we can make an asynchronous component using Vue 3's composition API. Here are some instances when an async component could be useful. Showing a loading animation before a page loads, displaying a placeholder content such as like a logged out page, for example, and also handling lazily loaded images. Previously in Vue 2, we would have to use conditionals like vif or vlse to check if our data has been loaded and then show fallback content. But now, suspense comes built in with Vue 3, so we don't have to worry about tracking when our data is loaded and rendering the proper content. All right, so how do we implement this? In this example, we're going to say that we have an asynchronous article info.view component. All we have to know is that the setup method can be made asynchronous, just like any other method. For our example, article info will have an async setup method that loads user data before returning. So let's say inside this component, we have an async function called get article info, and then inside, we just want some asynchronous API call. Let's say that we're just running a set timeout and then returning some hard-coded data at the end. Inside our setup, which we should have made asynchronous, we can say const article equals await and then get article info. And then finally, let's return article so it's available in our template. And then in our template, let's just print out article so we have something there. Then let's say we have an article post.view component that renders our article info component. If you want to display something like loading article while waiting for a component to fetch the data and resolve, we can implement suspense in just three steps. First, wrap our async component in a template hashtag default tag. Second, add a sibling right next to our async component with a tag template hashtag fallback. And then finally, wrap both components in a suspense component. Using slots, suspense will render our fallback content until the default one is ready to go then it will automatically switch to display our resolve component. Another cool feature of view suspense components is that we can catch errors and actually show the user some sort of error message. In view 2, this was possible using the error captured hook, but in view 3 and the composition API, it's been renamed to on error captured. Regardless of what it's called, this hook runs when an error from any child component is captured, and we can use this with suspense to render an error if something goes wrong. So let's say in our setup method, we'll import ref from view, and we'll say const error message equals ref, and then we'll set the default value to null. Then we also want to import on error captured from view. And whenever this hook is detected, we just want to set error message dot value to something went wrong. Then we'll return error message from setup. And inside of our template, outside of our suspense, we'll create a div with a v if error message. So if error message is not null, meaning we have an error, and inside we'll just print out error message. And honestly, that's all the basic info you need to get started with Suspense Components. Suspense is just one way that Vue makes it super easy for developers to tackle common problems. Instead of having to conditionally render components, we can just use Suspense to take care of things for us. And if you want to see a really cool way to use Suspense, we can use them to create skeleton loading screens. And I already created a full video tutorial about that, which is linked down in the description below. In my opinion, this is one of the neatest additions to Vue 3. And now you should be a little more familiar with the basic stuff suspense components. But that's all for this video. As always, leave any questions down below and like and subscribe for more view content.